that what happens? God's telling uh, Cain, why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? Why is your face on the ground? If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you don't do well, sin lies at the door. And, it's, and he's saying here, um, and unto thee shall be his desire. In other words, sin wants you, but you have rule over it. That's right. You have the power to rule over sin. Yes. Yes. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, right after God says this, they were in the field, and Cain rose up against Abel and killed him. After the word of the Lord says that you will have authority. What did the Bible say in chapter 3? That we would bruise his head and that our heel would be bruised. He's under our feet. Thank you, Lord. And out of that, we have jealousy, we have rage, and lies. Because in verse... Uh, nine, the Lord says to Cain, where's your brother? Again, it's not because God doesn't know where he is. God's always going to make us accountable for everything that we do. Amen. And what does Cain say? I don't know. What, what am I, my brother's keeper? It ain't my responsibility. And yet the lies that go to cover up. Anytime there's sin in the lives of people, you're going to see cover up yeah. and shame and all yeah. those things, the jealousy, the rage. Why? Because he got more attention from God. It wasn't that God loved Abel anymore. He just had favor with his offering. And God was saying, you'll, get, you'll, you, you'll have favor. And then in 14, when God begins to curse him, and Cain says, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. There again, broken fellowship. Yes. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that finds me is going to kill me. And, Kelly, and he's, I'm going to be away from your face. He's seen the result of his sin, which is broken fellowship from God. But then again, we see God's grace. When God tells him that the people that you come across will never lay their hands on you and will never kill you. God's grace and his mercy will always go far beyond what we could ever do against God. Where sin abound, grace does much more abound. It's endless, God's grace. And so we see that through the line of descendants, as people begin to multiply, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. You see, that's the thing about sin, is that we don't have to practice sin. We are born sinners. It's the nature of Adam. Don't you notice that you never have to teach a child how to be bad? Yes. Did you ever, you ever wonder, I mean, as a parent, I think, how in the world did they come up with that? Sin is the nature. We have to teach them to be good. We have to practice to be good as adults, don't we? To make conscious decisions. And he saw the wickedness, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. We see the wickedness of man, but in Genesis 6, 8, it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Lord. Noah found grace, and God began to look at him. Grace, what was that word again? Unmerited favor. Noah was a man that worshipped his God. He was a just man in, in, verse, uh, in chapter 6, verse 9, and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. He walked with God. That walking with God, habitual fellowship with God. To be walking with God, you are going to make have to make a habit with your fellowship with Him. It doesn't just come. It's something that we need to practice. It's something that we need to continually perfect.